Now I understand. Why is that so easy? In comparison to what I've been doing, that's so much easier. Are you kidding me right now? Yeah, just looking at where I jump instead of just going for it. That makes a lot more sense now. And you can kind of see the positioning you have to do now. So, in general, the way we're going to do this is we jump on the bush. Let's see how many times it takes me. One. And then, you go here, right about, and then you jump forward. And then from there, I have managed to save 42 seconds. And I'm probably going to PB on this right now. Much easier. You see that? Much, much easier. Very much easier. This game to PB as long as they don't choke. So that's how LS works. From here on out, you play the rest of the game. Now, what does that entail? One, I'm jumping before these things because they can save you a bit of time if you land on them just right. And as well, what we're going to do is run down here and activate the uh, event with Wall Rider. Uh, you have to wait for that to turn red. You now hit the checkpoint. So now that we're here, we can fully play the game. You get chased, and then you need to start all the sequence of events that lead you to the end game. As long as I don't die, technically this can be an easy PB. Very easy. Is everyone called event percent? Like, what do you mean? All chapters and glitchless are the ones that you do all the game. All chapters is that you have to get to every chapter completed as you would, which mostly involves crazy out of bounds and glitching throughout the entire game. However, all glitchless is how you would play it expectedly. So, like the glitchless. the general idea and once you get the hang of it it's easier but it's all timing in the jumping like that's the entire trick you have to know when to get the jumps it's not the easiest thing in the world that takes time oh yeah preferably i think glitch uh no one abounds is cool then glitchless is uh, probably the category i most like say is like the category <laughs> and i weigh in the room but yeah, Barley, this is how it all works. You do the game very quick, and it works pretty well. Also, this will be my Outlast PB updated. I'm saving, like, fucking 50 seconds. This is amazing. There's also a minor skip you can do where you are outside the store. It saves you the total amount of time of being outside the store. You just have to listen to the speech. It is extremely slightly faster, because you're, you're closer. Yep. Yeah, Glitchless is a good category in all honesty. I know Juo did at one point. Obviously, you do a Dark and Rose. No, sorry, I know you run the game, but I can't remember which category. You do, I know, Nord of Bounds. But I think you do any percent as well. There's zero, like, things of time. You just wait for him to speak. Like, half the run is listening to this guy speak. But the movement in the end game as well is just really fun. But I'll show the movement again when, as you go. The game is extremely linear. Now, I'll give you step-by-step -step interactions on what you must do in directions you must go. So once the door opens, you bank a left. Once you bank this left, you're banking another left, and this door opens. You'll notice it. Don't go forward. It won't work. You have to wait for the door to enter. Now, you have two paths. The bloody path and the left path. Go left. Don't follow the blood. Come on. It's a horror game. You shouldn't be doing that. There is blood over here, but you don't know that. From this point on, Wall Rider will start chasing you, and it's mostly linear for how it's going to go. It's not going to be too many, like, oh, I have to go this way. I have to go this way. You just sort of go, and then hope to God you can find your way. You gotta be careful, uh, make sure you don't dilly-dally too much or else you'll die, and dying is bad. Uh, and make it into each of the purifying rooms, because you want the green gas to be all over you. I think it makes you invisible or something, I don't remember the entire thing. Anyway, go right afterward, and then you get chased yet again in a moment. From this point on, we'll be hitting the main room, uh, which is the lab room. And in the lab room, uh, the main lab chamber, uh, you have this giant orb. The answer is right and then left. You can turn the light support. There's a jump you can do here that's much faster by getting the exact corner angle. By getting that, you don't have to walk downstairs like a chump. Which will be much better, in my opinion. From this point on, the whole goal here is to turn that valve. So you need to get up there to turn the valve. It might have. I don't actually know for God Pastor. Most of my experience in this game is by playing the beginning and the end and watching other people run the game. So anything you say story wise is probably more correct than what I can put out. I just understand there's a ghost who's pissed off at you. Anyway, once you're up here, I jump at the valve and then you can turn it. And the coolest part about this section is the small jump you do in terms of timing. 
there is a rail and you jump off it right here so you can land on these canisters so you don't get a hard fall. A hard fall would lose you time and potentially die by doing so, as well Rider will catch up to you. <laughs> by doing this, however, you're good to go and you have the cool music. Every now and again you pop up your camera for style, no other reason, you just pop it up for style. I hear it saves you a minor amount of time, I, I don't remember exactly what it does, but it, people do it and it seems to help. So I recommend just doing that. There we go. Alright, and now we're going to be hitting the next section. I can still not PB if I fuck up the jump, because there's a very important jump. Also, now we get to take the stairs. There are many flights of stairs, and you don't want to mess up on them. Looking down, I think, is slightly faster, but then you're not going to be able to see where you're going. So you better know how to walk up and down stairs. It'll save you time. There's many patterns you can use, but you have to find what works best in stair walking for you. As long as you keep moving, you should be good. And then make sure you land. You can mess up that jump as well. I get this out, get my camera out, and you jump. I like these little slides, they're cool. I don't remember if you have to go for the first one, but the second one's good to go for. And you're in. All these stairs. Okay, we have a little bit more stairs this time, and now we have a glitch, right? It's called the Superman jump. The way this is gonna work is we're gonna be Superman. We can either walk down the stairs again, like a chump, or we can not walk down stairs. We're gonna do the second option. So what I'm going to do is hop on this rail. Hop on this rail, uh, like so. I then jump backward, and then I want to... Oh, I landed on it. I'm stupid. I land on that. I jump right there. I jump left, and then I just go top left. By doing that, you get caught by Wall Rider. And then he's just going to beat the ever-living shit out of you as you fall down to the ground. There you go. It's much faster than taking the stairs. Why would you take the stairs when you can just get knocked down? It's much quicker. It is a hard fall. But it's nice, because you jump backward, and then you jump, like... You can jump forward, by the way, but it's so much easier to jump backward. It's a weird thing. Uh, there's another glitch you can do here, which allows you to just kind of not hit the hard fall. I don't know how to do that one, because they suck. But in here, what you can do is crouch, and then you don't put your hand down. By doing the action and crouching at the same time, you don't put your hand on the thing, therefore saving you a full half second. From then on, wall fighters are going to go inside you, and then all you have to do is make sure you hit the proper points, and that's outlast. You still have a bit of movement, but the game technically is pretty easy. I thought it was like you had to bounce against the wall or something. I know the wall's supposed to slow you down, but I can never get it. I know you have to ride the wall, though, and it like, keeps you moving. By the way, if you're wondering, world record, like, a few months ago was a 9, like, 13, like a 9, 11. I think maybe 9, 08, actually. Maybe even lower than that. I'm currently about to get an 850 with the new strat. It's insane how much time this strat saved. Like, people are like, dude, your LS run sucks now. No, I was just the old strat. This is the new strat. I'm not that bad at Outlast, actually. I'm pretty good. <laughs> like, I'm not amazing at it, but I'm definitely not bad. From this point on, um, you are going to be injured and moving. The way you want to do it is, one, vault this thing. It'll be faster. Because you get pulled towards it, and he'll do it. Then afterward, you want to just make sure you're hitting the checkpoints as soon as possible. So, you want to get, like, roughly back to this blue chair. You want to make sure that when you're taking the steps, you're getting launched across the room as you should be. From here on out is the end of the run. We're looking at maybe an 840. And from here on out, the run ends once your hand is on the ground. Oh yeah, it'd be insane. I, I don't know if it'd be fast. Like, you can get in like 12 seconds though. You can get the out of bounds in like 12 seconds. It's insane. We are about to get like a maybe a 47, 45. Come on. And it's time. That's an 845 in Outlast. That's a PVM. Happy I did this more. Thank you for talking.